This morning, the main route between California and Arizona is closed. Floodwaters washed out the Texas-Washington Bridge yesterday along Interstate 10. Crews from other projects have now been diverted in order to deal with this. And really, at this point, we have no idea when either side is going to reopen. Safety and the uh, traveling public is our number one concern. We obviously shut down the freeway, and we need to figure out a plan. We get here, Caltrans is expecting us to execute this job in a very short window period of time. So the initial emergency phase of the project, uh, which was trying to reopen the highway, took four days. Got forces out here about three o'clock on Monday and by noon on Friday, we had uh, the road open to traffic in both directions. The kind of work that uh, we do in the public works arena takes highly skilled, highly safe, highly capable people. Working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to make this happen was essentially the, the most difficult part of the project. Caltrans mission is the economy and livability of, of California. So this is a huge goods movement corridor. People joke it's such a small bridge, but the impact is huge. This is the story of how paying the prevailing wage supports our cities, counties, and the economy of our state by providing a trained and ready workforce that gets the job done right the first time. As precise as the construction operation needs to be, really requires a dedicated workforce and a highly skilled workforce, and I think prevailing wage gets us that. The prevailing wage statute does a couple of things. We're talking about wages, we're talking about fringe benefits, and we're talking about apprenticeship standards, which is the full package to attain and retain the kind of quality held that we need to build a project like this on time and on budget. We want the contract to be profitable. We, we need them to make money so that they can continue to bid our work. And we feel that having prevailing wage is a level playing field and allows a contract to be more efficient, innovative, to increase their profit, and ultimately having a win-win for us and, and the contractor. California passed its prevailing wage law more than 75 years ago. The law helped ensure that workers got proper training through labor management funded apprenticeship programs. Today, that investment in quality has paid off in the productivity and cost effectiveness of California's skilled construction labor force. The training is key for any employer. In any type of complex building environment, it's impossible for you to rely on untrained or unskilled employees. Cindy McMacken is president of Pan Pacific Plumbing and Mechanical, a woman-owned plumbing business that has three offices in California and nearly 1,100 employees. Her company uses the most state-of-the-art technology, but they won't even bid on a non-prevailing wage job. It's hard to compete with the kind of the fly-by-night, open up their trunk of their car and go to work type of contractors. Um, we prefer to be in an environment of professionals and people with the experience like we have with the you know, larger, more complex projects. The state's prevailing wage law requires contractors to pay the minimum wage rate that already prevails in the community where the work is to be done. Wage rates are not set by the government. Instead, they're set by the free market in each area. Former Long Beach Mayor Bob Foster believes that paying the prevailing wage not only benefits the individual worker, it's also good for his city. For the community, it's also important. We get to hire local contractors quite often, and those local contractors bring in not only skilled workers, they bring in local people to be trained, not just for jobs, but careers. It's a huge advantage because those people now work in the city, and they also contribute to the local economy, and they're able to quite often buy a home, raise a family with the wages they make on prevailing wage jobs. That's kind of the genius of prevailing wage is that the original intention of prevailing wage law, the Davis-Bacon Act, was to keep work in the area where the project was being built. That's economist Kevin Duncan. He studied the impact of the prevailing wage across the nation. When a city decides to build a public works project, a prevailing wage law will help keep more of that local tax money in the area and the jobs that are associated with that public works project in the area as well. Duncan did a study of two California cities, Gilroy and Palo Alto, that were both building similar sized libraries. The Gilroy Library opened on time in April 2012. The Palo Alto Library? Well, that's another story. Opposite of what you might expect, Gilroy paid the prevailing wage, and Palo Alto did not. Obviously, many factors go into the cost of a building. According to Gilroy City Council member Peter LaRoe Munoz,
cutting the prevailing wage does not necessarily lead to a less expensive project. Remember that wages themselves are only about a fifth to 25 percent of the cost of the project. So lowering the wage by getting rid of prevailing wage actually wouldn't save a project a whole lot of money to begin with. What are other benefits of the prevailing wage for a city? In Gilroy, teamwork was key. Dan Johnson was the construction project manager for the Gilroy Library. With construction, it's not just how well a, a contractor or a subcontractor knows his or her work, but it's the teamwork, work, and relationships. The better people know each other, the easier, the, the more comfortable they feel with each other, the smoother things come. For Gilroy City Council member Kat Tucker, it's also about more than cost. Quality of the work shows that with the skilled workers and the fact that they, because they're skilled and they know what questions to ask one another when the different trades are working together, that also keeps you on schedule and on time and I think that's key. The people that came to work here, uh, they knew what they were doing and obviously since we're still on time, they managed to do it in a timely fashion. In Gilroy, a large majority of the contractors, subs and workers were local. Palo Alto hired an out-of-town general contractor and only one of the 33 listed subcontractors was based in the county. When you have prevailing wage, which allows you to hire local contractors, local subcontractors, and local construction workers, when they are paid the wages and benefits that they deserve, they keep that money within their local community. There are other benefits from having local workers on a job. When you're able to employ workers within a community, their commute time is less, there are fewer cars on the road, there's less time traveling, there's less traffic, so economically it's important, and it's also important environmentally. Originally scheduled to open in the summer of 2012, the Palo Alto Library was delayed by more than two years. The Sacramento-based contractor blamed the architect, the architect blamed the contractor, and the city council tried to figure out who to sue, which is why no current council members would talk to us on camera. John Barton, an architect and Stanford professor, served on the city council from 2006 through 2009. He fought for having Palo Alto pay the prevailing wage, but the council went the other way. For me, being a construction professional, I understand that prevailing wage is not an automatic increase in the project cost. In fact, you're more likely to get a better project on time, so you're going to have better workers, a more efficient system, the cost that matters is labor cost per unit of output. Preponderance of academic research shows that once you take into account the size of the project and the complexity of a project, there's no cost difference between a prevailing wage job and a construction project that's not covered by a prevailing wage. So by removing that element of lowering the wages and keeping a level playing field for all bidders, it encourages them to be more efficient and more effective with their resources and the resources of their workers. What happens if you don't pay the prevailing wage? Fewer Gilroy workers and Santa Clara workers at work in our city. That's just the bottom line. Without a prevailing wage law, you're more likely to have contractors from outside the area do the work. So your local tax money is gonna leak out of the area economy. And it's about quality and workmanship. When we look at how we spend our money, we shouldn't just be looking to spend the least amount, we should be looking to spend it in the best possible way. Mayors across the state support the prevailing wage law because it works. That building you're building is going to be there for 60, 70, 80, maybe 90 years. And you want to make sure that it performs the way you designed it. You do that by having the people who build it be highly skilled. That's what prevailing wage does. Back at the I-10, the new eastbound side of the bridge was built in just 24 days. The cornerstone of that achievement was the streamlined, highly trained, and highly skilled workforce who made it happen. Caltrans promised the world that we were going to reopen the bridge by the end of the month, and we reopened it six days early. We were able to uh, meet or exceed Caltrans' schedules that they gave us, and that was clearly due to, uh, you know, a, a skilled workforce. From the start of work to when we opened it, it was, it was 40 days. I mean, and that's, that's quite an accomplishment. So that's the success that we're very, very proud of. Quality workforce, the well-trained workforce in the long run gets the job done right and is a benefit to the taxpayers of California and the motoring public of California.